Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. Uh, for this video, I'd like to look at the humerus. This happens to be the left humerus, and this is the right humerus. And the way you can tell left from right is that the head of the humerus, this part, points medially. And if we look, this is the proximal epiphysis, so this would be where your shoulder is. And this part of it, the head, points medially. This part of it at the other end, um, at the distal epiphysis, you'll notice that there's this bump coming out. And this bump actually faces forward. So if you put this up to your body as if this was on your shoulder, point this medial, and then see whether this points forward or not. If you've got it on the side where this is pointing in and this is pointing forward, then that's the side that the humerus belongs on. So that's one way to help you during a lab exam. Uh, major features of the humerus. The head is this part. I already mentioned that. The deltoid tuberosity is down here. It's on the opposite side from where the head is, and it's a roughened area. You can kind of see it as a bump, but it's really a roughened up area. It's where the deltoid muscle, being part of your shoulder, comes down and articulates, or excuse me, inserts into the humerus creates this rough area. So that was the deltoid tuberosity. Um, up at the top of the bone, on the other side from where the head is, this again is the head, and if I flip it over you can see two rounded surfaces, or semi-rounded surfaces. The larger of the two is called the greater tubercle. The lesser of the two is called the lesser tubercle. So lesser tubercle, greater tubercle. Another way to remember these two, um, the lesser tubercle is towards the front. And remember, this is pointing medial, and this is pointing towards the front. So the less, lesser tubercle is towards the front. And the greater tubercle is um, lateral. If I turn the bone this way, that's another, this is another way that you can make out greater and lesser tubercle. The greater tubercle is here, and the lesser tubercle is here and there's a notch in between them. So that's greater and lesser tubercle. Uh, the capitulum, the capitulum is part of the distal epiphysis, <clears throat> and it's actually this area here. This is the capitulum. And the trochlea is here, so this is the trochlea. The olecranon fossa is on the back. It's this indentation here. Medial and lateral epicondyles. This is the medial epicondyle, and this is the lateral epicondyle. And if you recall, epicondyles mean a part of the bone that is sticking out that is superior to the articular surface, and this is the articular surface down here, um, made up of the capitulum and the trochlea. So these are above the articular surface, so they're epicondyles. Medial epicondyle and lateral epicondyle. And if you're wondering whether it's the medial epicondyle or the lateral epicondyle, again remember that the humerus's head points medial. If this condyle also points medial, then it's the medial epicondyle. Going back to these guys, the trochlea um, and the capitulum, I'm going to bring up, this is the right humerus, so I'm going to bring up the right ulna and put it in where it belongs, and I'm going to bring in the right radius and put it in where it belongs. Notice how this articulates, and if you bend your elbow, this is how it would bend. So the ulna articulates with the trochlea, while the radius articulates with the capitulum. For some people, it helps to see the bones together to understand what these parts are. If I flip this whole thing over carefully, and I'm, I'm just going to let go of the radius and set it down. Remember olecranon fossa? 
if I take the ulna out, without jarring my camera too bad, um, this is the ulna, and this part of the ulna that my finger is tapping is the olecranon process of the ulna. The olecranon process of the ulna fits into the olecranon fossa of the humerus. Isn't it nice the way that works? And one more thing about the olecranon fossa, this is the same person's left humerus, and notice that they have a, also an olecranon fossa on their left humerus, but they have something else. They have a hole that goes through here. That's called an olecranon foramen, and this person happens to have one. Not everybody has one, and I thought it was interesting that they only have one on the left side. Those are all the major features of the humerus. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email, call me. And thank you once again for watching.